Hello everybody, David here, and this is not really supposed to be instructional, but I felt that I would record it anyway because, hey, what do you know, maybe someone will find it cool. Now, what I have here is the same Arduino that I've been using on my uh, door uh, lights project, and with it I have this new uh, Ethernet controller. Um, I'll write the chip name in the description. Um, and it's connected, you know, through this Ethernet cable over to my network switch, which is somewhere over somewhere over there. And the computer is also connected to the network. Now, what's going to happen is, um, what, what I want to happen is, when there's motion, so there's a motion sensor on the outside of my door. So when there's motion, and then I open the door, so that... So like say there's a door, so I walk up to the door and then it detects motion and then I open the door. I want the lights to turn on. So I have a Belkin Wemo light switch uh, on my light switch and I've already figured out how to control that from, uh, a, from the computer. So when I walk up to the door and I open it, I want the lights to turn on. So this Arduino's got to tell this chip, this Ethernet, to tell the computer to turn the lights on. Now, let's say I want to, I want the lights to turn off when I leave the room. Well, what happens then is I open the door, so there's no motion outside. I open the door, then I walk out. Then what happens? There's motion on the outside. And then I close the door, and then when I close the door, well then there's motion on the outside. So if there was no motion when I opened the door, but then when I closed the door, there's motion on the outside, then that means I left the room, and the Arduino should tell this to tell the computer to turn the lights off. Uh, I'm just pressing control a few times so that the screensaver doesn't engage. <laughs> anyway, um, so what I have here is a breadboard, and I've simply connected ground to the minus sign and 5 volts to the plus sign. So the way the breadboard is connected is here these holes are all connected so anything running along these lines is connected. And um, here these are connected uh, this way. So that's how a breadboard works. Now there are several sensors here. Um, well three actually. This green wire corresponds to my light-dependent resistor. Now, I have the light-dependent resistor, the motion sensor, and the door sensor on my door, but I don't feel like taking them down to test them, so I'm just using this. So, this green wire represents my light-dependent resistor. When the lights are on, it'll read a higher voltage, and when the lights are off, it'll read a lower voltage. Now I have another video where I showed you how the light dependent resistor was wired up. You can go check that out if you want. So right now the lights are off so this is in the ground position which means that it's it, that the Arduino thinks the lights are off. This red wire here corresponds to the motion sensor or the passive infrared sensor. It is connected to ground which means there's no motion. If I were to connect that to high voltage, or 5 volts, then that would mean that there is motion. Or, that's what it would mean if that were a motion sensor. Finally, the blue switch is the door. And, actually, I just realized it's connected wrong. Yep, connect that to ground. When this blue wire, or the door sensor, or read switch, is connected to ground, that means the door is closed. If it's not connected to anything, that means the door is open. So that should not be connected to 5 volts ever. Um, I don't think I caused any harm do in doing that, but yeah, that shouldn't, that shouldn't have been connected there. Anyway, so let's run through a scenario. Let's say I walk up to the door. So I'm going to have the Arduino turn the lights on. So you can look there to see um, the uh, t the text go by. I'm going to have the Arduino turn the lights on. So the scenario is I walk up to the door 
and then open it. The light should turn on. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, it's only going to do that if the lights are already not on or not already on. So the light sensor has to be in the ground position. And okay, I walk up to the door, which means motion gets tripped. So for motion, I'm going to move this red wire to from ground to 5 volts. Now the lights the motion sensor actually puts out 3 volts, but uh, 5 volts is the same means the same thing to the Arduino. So now there's motion because the red wire is connected to 5 volts. Then, when I open the door, the light should turn on. So when a door opens, it'll break the circuit with the read switch, which means this would get disconnected from ground. So I'm going to pull this wire and the light should turn on. Now you can look back there to see the room lights turn on. So, aha, the light's turned on. And right now, this is not connected to anything, which means the door is open. Okay, so I close the door. And now the lights are on, so I'm going to move that to the on position. Now you see, you saw back there the text moved again. Uh, that was just because when I connected it to ground, I it disconnected again and connected again. And then that just made it think that I opened the door twice while the lights were still off. Okay, so the lights are on now. The lights are on. The light dependent resistor is in the on position. And what I need is to turn the lights off. So how is this going to work? Um, first, let's set the motion sensor back to no motion. So we're going to take that and put it in ground. So connect this back to ground. Okay. So lights are on, no motion, door closed. All right. What we need to do now is I'm going to open the door, then trip the motion sensor, and then close the door. So the way this works is I'm going to walk up to the, so how the scenario is I walk up to the door, I go outside, which then trips the motion sensor, and then I close the door, which should turn the lights off in the room. However, note, there has to be no motion before the door is opened. So if there isn't motion when the door opens, and remember the motion sensor is on the outside, so if I open the door from the inside, then, so if I open the door from the inside, then there's no motion on the other side. So I open the door, I walk outside, and then motion gets tripped. Then I close the door, and that should turn the lights off. So let's run through the scenario. Lights are on. Okay. So there's no motion right now that's connected to ground. And I'm going to open the door. So when I open the door, I just disconnect that. Then motion has to get tripped. So I have to move this to the... To the 5 volt rail. So now there's motion. Okay. Now what? Well, now I have to close the door. So I'm going to close the door, and when I reconnect this to ground, you should see the lights turn off. So you can look back there and on the computer to see that happen. So I'm going to use my right hand to do this. I'm going to connect it back to ground. And there we go. The lights are now off. So, um, yeah, oops, I can't get this in, oh, there we go, and the lights are now off, so obviously the light dependent resistor would get moved to low voltage. All right, and that's it. Um, I'm going to put the Arduino and the network card uh, back on the door and wire the real sensors in and Let's change this back to no motion. And then we should see this completely automate my lights. And you'll one thing I'd like to point out is the light dependent resistor is just sensing light in general. So let's say there's sunlight coming in through my window. Well, then the light dependent resistor will report that the lights are on. And then when I open the door, the Arduino is smart enough to know not to send the signal to turn the lights on. Well, okay, the Arduino isn't that smart. I programmed it, so I'm smart, okay? <laughs> anyway, 
um, I guess that's it for now. Um, so, uh, I'll be putting another video up when I get this back on the door. And I'll see you guys in the next one.